What's up, everybody? Once again, it's Brand Man Sean, and we got to talk about one of the biggest reasons for Eminem's success and placement in the game that nobody really talks about, which is story. We're going to show how that worked for Eminem, but then we're going to talk about five things that will help you tell a good story for yourself. So first of all, let's look at Eminem. What am I talking about when I say story really helps solidify his place in the game? Well, all right, when Eminem first came out into the game, he was this white boy, right? And we all know that there was a stigma when it came to being the white rapper at that time, largely due to Vanilla Ice, even though the Beastie Boys held it down quite a bit, but there had been nobody like Eminem for sure at that point. Lo and behold, he was also the white boy rapper next to Dr. Dre, this super hood, thugged out type guy. You've never even seen him next to a white boy before in terms of working with, doing music with, like who is this guy? That already created a sense of story, curiosity, wonderment, all that stuff in the first place. But what I'm really talking about in terms of solidifying Eminem's story is Eight Mile. People gloss over the fact that this movie, what it did for his career was solidify him as a legend. Why? It was a film inspired by his real story. And in that film, it was an underdog story. It showed a guy who already stuck out because he was a white guy. He was in the hood. He was trying to fit in and he had this dream of becoming a dope rapper in these rap competitions, these freestyle battles. It showed that he was being beat down. He was not great at first and then he overcame, which is the greatest story that is sold again and again and again the underdog story. Think about that alone. That's the formula for a good movie. When they did this movie, let's mention that for a minute too, they did it quality on a level of any good movie. I would put that not in like, oh, they did that corny little project. That is literally a high quality movie. It did $116 million at the box office. So keep all of that stuff in mind because anytime you see an underdog story happen in real time, it is the stuff of legend, right? You see this with every single artist. When they first come up, they're already an underdog. But when you can see that deep, feel the emotion, feel the story, really connect on that level like 8 Mile allowed you to do and then say, I'm the real life version of this guy. It's a done deal. It was a wrap. The same thing happened with 50 Cent, Get Rich or Die Trying. They painted the story, the getting shot nine times, that comeback, that whole mentality. Matter of fact, it's no surprise that 50 Cent was on the same record label, right? They realized the power in that formula, the power in that narrative. And a movie was the ultimate way of making you be able to connect with the artist in ways that music doesn't allow you to. You see these situations, you understand where he's coming from. And now when you hear his music, you understand the mentality behind it. You're connecting it with it in a totally different way. Without that, Eminem would not be seen as undeniable of a great rapper and legend, in my opinion. And it's not to say that he's not, it's just the fact that a lot of the consumers, the regular public in the first place, they didn't even think about that style or acknowledge that style as much or what that type of skill set really meant. But people got an appreciation for it through the Eight Mile movie and they understood it. They got educated on what that looked like in the first place. And making it even better, clips going around leaking later on where you can see Eminem at the Rap Olympics to solidify, hey, this is the movie. This is kind of like some mini documentary clips that kind of solidify and, and prove that the movie was true in some aspect. And then of course you have Eminem just being dope and having the music that he had in the first place. So now let's get to five tips, five things to keep in mind when it comes to creating a great story. Number one, great stories are universal. We already kind of touched on this when we talked about the underdog story. How many times do you see the underdog story? There has to be some sort of villain, something to fight against, whether that's establishment, whether that's a goal that you're just roughing and trying to reach, or whether that's another person. 
Love, love is a universal thing. Maybe you are chasing a girl, but there has to be a challenge. There has to be something. So what are you chasing? What are your challenges? After you get your initial come up and talk about your past, now you can switch and figure out what am I chasing? What is bigger than me? And how can I communicate that? I've talked about Gary Vee. If you don't know him, he's a, a, a entrepreneur, right? Marketer, but he's a very rich guy already. However, people still root for him because he paints this goal of being a billionaire. He's already a millionaire, but he paints the goal of being a billionaire. And even outside of that, he's painting a goal of buying the New York Jets, which still is not necessarily the easiest goal considering how buying teams works out. Which brings me to number two, simplicity. Simplicity is literally one of the most important parts to telling a great story. As creatives, we have so many elements that we want to put into stories. There's so many layers and so many details, but when you get wrapped up in all these details and add a side story to a side story to a side story, people lose focus. When <laughs> people lose focus, it takes a lot of the power out of the story. And on top of that, going back to the Gary Vee scenario, one thing that was very specific and simple is his goal is to buy the New York Jets. It's one thing to just say billionaire, that's a lot of money, ah, cool. But something as visual and tangible as buying the New York Jets just made the vision stronger for other people to visualize and see happening. So that allows people to root even harder. In the same way, seeing Eminem go through this competition right? That made it a lot more tangible for people to feel and connect with. And because of that, you root for them greater. So be very specific and very simple and stay in line with that. Now, we've talked about details in terms of not adding too many details to the story. But number three is being detailed in the image that you're painting. Be detailed in the most important parts of the story, right? When you paint the challenge, let them understand the challenge. When you paint the goal or what it was like, what it felt like to win or what it felt like to struggle, paint those parts of the picture in detail. And number four, appeal to people's deepest emotion, whether that's fear, whether that's a need for success or overcoming obstacles or embarrassment or just comedic value that comes from pain, whatever these deeper emotions are, if you can find ways to tap into those and make people feel it in one way or another, it's going to make your story far more memorable for one, and that's going to be where they connect as well. Because now that they felt it, they have an experience that they could truly associate. There's been a lot of movies that we've seen, there's been a lot of movies that we've remembered and forgotten on both sides though. So you can tell your story and even entertain in the moment, but connecting with those deeper emotions will be the things that allows your story to be remembered and create that thing of a legend within whatever your you know, group of people that are fans are. And number five, last but not least, challenge the status quo, right? Do something different. What is outside of what people would expect of you? It's very easy to think about this when you think about social issues, right? How many times do we have an oppressed group, whether that's women in some kind of way or, or black people in some kind of way or some kind of race, right? You can always say, all right, the group is going through their challenges and that can be a thing for them to connect with and tell within their story. But getting more specific, right? More detailed, painting a stronger picture is not only am I a woman, now I'm a woman trying to be the first coach in the NFL or first coach in the NBA, right? That's a very specific struggle where they're challenging a status quo. They're in a space that's brand new. So as an artist, that could just mean talking about ideas that are different that people wouldn't expect. That could be doing something like even Lil Pump when he said F.J. Cole. How many artists have you said F a lyrical respected artist? It's not from the standpoint of we have legitimate beef, but I don't care about those lyrics that y'all say are dope from a current artist. A lot of people say bump the old school, it's the new school, but he's a current rapper that is well respected and he's a type of music that people generally say is good music. Lil Pump said F J Cole. He could have just said F lyrical rappers, but once again, for story's sake, more specific, J. Cole, that gave a very specific picture, a very specific target. And this challenges a status quo. So with that being said, keep in mind, a lot of these stories 
don't have to be told in hindsight like this was my story a lot of these stories are being painted in real time so when you talk about Lil Pump that's a perfect example when he said FJ Cole that created a storyline right there young rapper this type of style says F this type of rapper but not only this type of rapper this specific rapper and now the story spreads a lot more it's something for people to talk about so it's not always about telling stories for people to imagine and remember it's creating stories for people to tell so you can take these elements to create or you can also put these stories out in the world to be documented and that's it and for those of you who came to this from the master music branding guide i hope it allows the additional context for the rest of what you're about to read and when i eventually put this up on youtube maybe in a few months or something like that i want to know what you guys think do you know anything any kind of examples that can relate to the situation and if you haven't read the master music branding guide why go ahead check it out at the link in the description below and other than that of course if you like this video go ahead hit the like button if you like you might as well share it and if you're not subscribed you know what to do hit that subscribe button